Alright, back to give my reaction to another death battle, and I really don't know what to expect. When it comes to my cartoon viewing days, Spongebob was after my time. I mean, sometimes I channel flipped back in the day, and he'd come up and i watch a few minutes. It, it seems okay. I mean, nothing special. It's something I gotta really get into, like some other people my age who had a good time with it, but eh, it's like... What a, okay, looks cool. It's something for the kids these days, sure. There was a game for it made by Climax for the GBA, and they're the ones that made this offbeat action RPG for the old Xbox called Sudeki and, and Silent Hill Origins, which is, to this date, the only Silent Hill I've ever replayed, and it was pretty good. A bunch of British guys did it right. Hell, then again, what do I know? I thought Homecoming was also good, but, but, but okay, we're getting off topic. And as for Aquaman, <sighs> don't know what to expect about Aquaman. I mean, I mean, I really didn't learn a lot about Aquaman until the movie. I didn't even know that Black Banner was black. So enough jabbering. Let's get on with it. All right, three, two, one. Here we go. SpongeBob SquarePants, Nickelodeon's number one nautical nincompoop. Aquaman, the Thalassic Uh, what about the turtles? The I mean, the they can swim ocean. and shit, right? I looked it up. The infinite ink black depths of the seven seas are home to any number of terrifying, awe-inspiring creatures. They're also home to these two losers. Though when it comes to cartoon characters, there's always more hidden beneath the waves. That's right, we're prioritizing the cartoons for maximum tune for shenanigans! He's whiz It worked for Popeye! And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Besides, this is a good way to learn about Spongebob, since like I said, don't really know that the much about him except for channel flipping. The former allies of World War II were engaged in a cold war between capitalist West and communist East. The United States changed history forever with the introduction of the atomic bomb, a weapon of unparalleled nuclear Wait a minute! One of their most popular I was just joking about the turn. Turtles who were changed by radioactive the course of 12 You mean he's born of radiation too? So he's kind of broached with Godzilla? Atoll in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The results were ecological devastation and perhaps something more. Deep beneath the atoll, the fauna began to change. They evolved. Seriously, is this SpongeBob lore? This bikini bottom organized into a monarchy under the god king Neptune. It Holy shit! I've missed out! Even the simplest underwater creatures became capable of complex thought, including the very first multicellular organism to be categorized as part of the animal kingdom, the sea sponge. And one sponge in particular, the greatest of Order Rotifera, I think. Under the sea. I probably fucked that up. Oh! SpongeBob SquarePants. No, oh, I wanted to sing this song. I don't know about greatest. SpongeBob may headline one of the most popular children's cartoons of all time, but he's a total dork. He's a painfully naive man-child whose only ambition in life is to continue his minimum wage job as a fry cook at the Krusty Krab. Really sounding like a Squidward there, Wiz. And no one wants to be a Squidward. Sponge Robert might not have the flashiest life, but he's happy. And that's what matters, ain't it? Not in death, Hey, look at me. I slum it at a public health reference laboratory and I'm doing okay. Tasks. Right? Almost like anti-Toon Force. He's the biggest wimp in town, like the time he failed to lift a glass of lemonade, or the time a school bully gave him diarrhea, or the time he effortlessly rotated the entire planet. Huh. Oh, oh, oh. we're in for some shit now, aren't we? Despite being a real secret, okay, he can turn into an like Eldrick MC Escher abomination. And and as he awesome! He can stretch and shape shift his body. Oh, can he just he grab his balls? himself through asexual reproduction and absorb immense amounts of liquid. Wouldn't he always be full, though? From an entire lagoon to. Oh, God. Enough water to replace the moon? Oh, and for some reason, he has an insane healing factor. He survived being torn in half, vaporized, having his soul removed from his body, and literally being unraveled out of existence. Okay, I think we're good. We can just uh, end the run down here. No. I need to see how deep this rabbit hole goes. I was just kidding about, like, the Popeye level bullshit. Is control over 
bubbles. No, stay with me, this is unbelievable. Like a soapy green lantern ring, his bubbles can become anything he wishes. From guided cruise missiles to sentient life well, and entire some bubble of his societies. PS2 and GameCube That's games a were similar highly effect regarded. to his magic pencil, which can draw anything he wants into existence and erase it from reality just as easily. The pencil was so powerful, SpongeBob sent it back to the surface where it belonged. But in later seasons, he still just has it for some reason. And finished! I call him Doodle Wiz. Wiz, he's just like you. But I made him with a pencil. I'm calling the police. <laughs> Doodle Even Wiz Smash! Godlike in SpongeBob's yellow hands, like his reef blower, which hoovered up the entirety of Earth's oceans in seconds and then exploded on top of SpongeBob all at once. It's estimated the entire mass of Earth's oceans is about 1.5 quintillion tons. Considering Not enough to cover the, the planet, entire Earth, creationists. Second, that'd be a kinetic energy of over 6,000 Yoda tons. That's enough energy to nuke Jupiter 13 times over. And SpongeBob was completely unharmed. His hydrodynamic spatula isn't just an impromptu bladed weapon. It's also his primary instrument to create the greatest foodstuff Bikini Bottom has ever seen. The Krabby Patty. A burger so delicious, it's basically magic. Not only is it totally addictive, SpongeBob was romantically attracted to one. It can nullify mind control, heal wounds, and even death. So you feed it to SpongeBob someone with a Starro drone on his face, and so hard they'd be fine. DNA fused, can ride on the scene transitions, and once cried so hard, he flooded Bikini Bottom. Even though it's already underwater. Shit, he once grabbed a hold of this mysterious string and unraveled the entire universe. He literally undid the fabric of reality in seconds. What the f***? What was that you were saying about anti-Toon Force? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not sure I've ever misjudged a character as severely as SpongeBob SquarePants. Nice character arc there, Wiz. Unfortunately for Roberto, the rest of the town only saw the goofy goober on the wow, outside. Wow, I really it missed out by skipping this too. to prove himself to be a real hero. You think he ever banged that squirrel? He's crushed Plankton's plan Z. Notice how quickly against an army of killer robots and even teamed up with uh, how quickly Wiz changed the subject. Neutron and Danny Phantom to save the Nicktoons multiverse. His biggest weakness is that he's a giant suicidally naive idiot. And depending on the humidity of the atmosphere around him, being out of the water can dehydrate and permanently incapacitate him. Oh, also seasonal rot. Those first three seasons are pure gold, but after that, oh boy. There's this one episode called Squid Baby where Squidward gets brain damaged into a giant baby and shits himself on screen. What are you talking about? Oh, right. <clears throat> Trials and tribulations and Hasselhoffs aside, it wasn't until SpongeBob accepted himself for who he was that he was rewarded with the greatest boon of all, middle management. So if nautical nonsense be something you wish, then pray to your yellow porous god for mercy because his whimsical laughter is the last thing you'll ever hear. And we don't get to hear it. Aquaman, King of the Seven Seas. We've covered Arthur Curry on the show before, and he's actually secretly awesome. That's right, Boomstick. But the version we're dealing with today is from the bargain bin cartoons from the 60s and 70s. Ah, uh, come now, on. You might assume that means it wasn't this for Aquaman that. is a total loser, but really, like Scooby and shit. Come on. Cartoons? Remember, this is from the era when Superman was sneezing so And now we have Gay Velma. So Get right. Finally! Its origin is basically the same as the Silver Age comics. Tom Curry was a humble lighthouse keeper who decided one day to fuck a fish. He did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Procreated with Atlanta, an Atlantean from the underwater city of Poseidonus, and from their union, Arthur Curry was born with magnificent aquatic abilities. And he's the king of Atlantis, too! Oh, wait, no. It says here that was introduced in the comics later. Here he's just some guy with magnificent aquatic abilities and a giant mutant seahorse that neighs just like a land horse. This Aquaman comes from a time when everybody who's anybody had their own secret cave with assorted gadgets. He's got an underwater jet ski, a net, octopus ink, a water pistol, and a portable heat ray to blast right through solid ice. Not exactly mind-blowing, but 
You know, I'm sure we're ramping up. We sure are. Aquaman's hybrid human Atlantean biology grants him superhuman strength and the ability to breathe underwater indefinitely and withstand the crushing depths of the ocean floor. The pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench is 16,000 pounds per square inch. That's like being stepped on by a uh, hundred elephants. Which, which is a lot, I, I guess. Aquaman is also an incredible Yay, swimmer. Yay, Boomstick did some science! In under an hour. That's almost twice the speed of sound. He can create water balls and whirlpools out of thin water, and fittingly, water-based attacks are completely ineffective against him. And of course, you can't forget his. Why well, use water hydro water pump? He can it doesn't work, you fish. piece of he can dumb even shit. People's minds and give them seizures, right? Oh, actually, that second part is also just from the comics. Cartoon Aquaman can talk to fish. Which is awesome! His telepathy can reach several miles, summon hundreds of sea creatures at once, and works on anything from microscopic organisms to alien life. As long as it's Cyanobacteria! Do my bidding! And still mind control them, right? Kind of? He can free them from mind control and even influence their emotional state to some degree, but besides that, there have been times when sea creatures have just ignored his commands outright. Wiz, I'm gonna be straight with you. You haven't said anything remotely mind-blowing yet. Does this Aquaman actually suck? Hold your seahorses. Aquaman's exploits were so world-renowned, he banded together with Earth's mightiest heroes to form a team capable of defending the planet, nay, the universe, from any threat. The Super Friends. The Super Friends. They're like the dime store knockoff version of the Justice League. What? No, no, you've got heavy hitters like Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman. Mm-hmm, keep going. Flash, Green Lantern. Uh-huh. Apache Chief, Samurai, Black Vulcan, the Wonder Twins, and their pet monkey Glee. Wiz, stop. You're embarrassing yourself. No, wait, his best direct strength feat was when he, uh, moved some trash. About 50 metric tons of it. Uh, the jokes write themselves, huh? Fun fact, Aquaman once enrolled in an American college under the name Mr. Waterman. So we're working with a pretty hefty IQ here, huh? Okay, so he's lame, and arguably completely lame. I was convinced I'd find some crazy, insane Popeye punching out the animator feet somewhere, but no! He sucks! He actually, actually sucks! His best feat is literally Garbage. I'll uh, take over from here, Wiz. Aquaman is a bit of a joke, sure, but he's not completely useless. He's dodged laser beams, defeated a living Titanic by luring it into an iceberg, seriously, and beaten this water elemental Undyne, who looks like a gorilla for some reason, uh, by summoning seagulls to pelt her with clamshells. He once even outswam this Kryptonian pterodactyl monster, Rokan, who flew from the edge of the galaxy to Earth in about 15 seconds. Wait, wait, really? Okay, okay, now we're talking. That'd be over 55 billion times the speed of light, and Aquaman's swimming clearly outmatched that. It doesn't matter if it looks lame. You get one, buddy. And, hey, he could probably kick your ass, person that's watching at home, so... That's something. Well, not if he's on dry land. Uh, if he's out of the water for even one hour, he dies. Never mind, person watching at home, just uh, hide for a bit, grab some lunch, and then uh, stomp on his corpse. But is raw power really what makes someone a hero? Or is it the drive to help others, to be of service, to sacrifice? That's what a hero is to me, and I'd say Aquaman's got as much of that as there are drops of water in the ocean. He's about to die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this can't be as much of a washout as Mask versus Deadpool or Rainbow Dash versus Starscream. Remember that one? The combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibility. One. One possibility. It's time for Aquaman's funeral! Mermaid Man? Wait a second, you're not Mermaid Man. The name's Aquaman, evildoer. Evildoer? I'm a hero. I saved this city. I win. There's only one real hero here, fiend. And he's a super friend. 
You see, sir, I'm a sea sponge, phylum porifera, and you can't just... Uh, porifera! I think that, that was the phylum name, god damn it. How about a little karate, water man? It's Aqua Man! <laughs> of course, he's a sea creature, and as the king of the seas, he's mine to command. I wasn't just reaching out to you, Sponge. Let him have it, chums. <laughs> Great Neptune! Get a load of this, sea man! Damn it, it's up! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Need water powers fading? Is there nothing I could do? A man. I see it now. A multiverse of Aquaman. And out of all of them. I'm the lamest fucking one! I'm a ripoff. A joke. I'm okay, no this is taking the Aquaman sucks me way too. used to say the same kind of things about me. Goofball, wingnut, knucklehead McSpazitron. Is this gonna be a uh, no contest like Pinkie Pie and... I'm ready. <laughs> May the best hero win! What? The other side of the universe. Sponge, let's be super friends. <laughs> Still couldn't get his name right. KO! What is it with ridiculously OP nautical themed cartoon characters on this show, Wiz? This was an incredibly close fight. Gotcha! Obviously Aquaman didn't have a snowball's chance in hell in defeating this little spongy bastitch. Where do we even start? With his bubbles and magic pencils, SpongeBob could basically do anything he wanted. There was no way Aquaman wouldn't get totally overwhelmed, especially with his much more limited arsenal. I can't think of a more lopsided matchup than someone whose main attack is throwing water against a sentient sea sponge. Aquaman's only potential option was his telepathy, but as we've covered, it's far less powerful powerful than his comic counterpart. There's no reason to believe SpongeBob wouldn't just ignore Arthur's commands. Even if it was straight up mind control, SpongeBob's Krabby Patties straight up cancel mind control. And really, nothing Aquaman had could overcome Bob's utterly broken regeneration. The little yellow dude has survived being completely disintegrated into dust and even erased from reality. All Aquaman can do is punch kind of hard, and even that's basically useless against Bob's squishy body. Maybe Aquaman could have found a way to dehydrate SpongeBob enough to keep him permanently incapacitated, like when he and Patrick were trapped in Shell City. But that would require the fight to take place out of the water, which messes Aquaman up way harder than it does SpongeBob. And it also require the fight doesn't instantly end up with SpongeBob karate chopping Aquaman at ten shit zillion times the speed of light, splattering his atoms against Saturn. Cause, yeah, remember when Spongebob unraveled the universe? Considering the- No, I'm sorry, I need to do this one. This is- this is fucking insane. 
Compared to SpongeBob's size, the string's width is about 192 micrometers. We can use that to find the volume of, say, one meter of string, and compare that to the volume of the entire observable universe. Considering it took SpongeBob about five seconds, he would have had to be pulling at 8.2 times 10 to the 78th power times faster than light. <sighs> That's as many times faster than light as there are atoms in the universe. This is the fastest calculable speed feat in our show's history. And it belongs to SpongeBob SquarePants. Like I said, I missed out so much by skipping this tune. Have you been listening to anything I've been saying? Good point, because let's not forget. Of course I didn't forget. That string feat also destroyed the entire universe. And stuff like that is actually consistent. SpongeBob is literally aware of the fourth wall and has rewritten the plot of his own story as he's living it. Screw the pencil or the bubbles, he can just will whatever he wants into existence from his imagination. He's a god, a yellow, spongy god of death. And that's why he beats Goku. At least our <laughs> just had a to... real hero. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. Yeah, sure, whatever, pal. He's dead. Too bad for the king of the seas. That sure was one sweet victory. The winner is SpongeBob SquarePants, our god. And he's wearing a Cyclops visor Thank for some for reason. Watching. Stay tuned, we'll be jumping All right, what do we got next? Next week. But you can always get more Death Battle right now by clicking one of those boxes right over there and by downloading the battle music linked down below. Okay, makes sense. Oh! They're doing it! Ho <laughs> ho! Yes!